So if you can get better, get better. If you can't, build around what you have. And as Barrett said, you can win a lot of football games if they play the right way. If they play like they did the first five weeks of the season last year, they're going to underachieve. But if they play the way they did starting Las Vegas forward, they're going to win a lot of football games. As, look, as look. Barrett said. All right, we're back. We are Sports Day, Jacob Sports YouTube Network, each and every day, noon to three Eastern. But you get up a little bit earlier, you can get the table set very nicely. Birds 365 with our next guest, John McMullen, along with Jody Mackey. You can follow John on Twitter as well at JF McMullen. And also check out John's work at jacobsports.com. Does a phenomenal job with content for the <laughs> Eagles. John, what's going on, my man? Hey, full house today. I'm That's excited. Right. That's yes, right. Sir. We're getting yes, ready, sir. man. <laughs> yes. Unlike unlike a lot of NFL teams, man, we, it doesn't matter if it's preseason, regular season, John, we're going, man. Our, our guys no are out there. Throughs, no walkthroughs here. <laughs> no no red practices here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, John, look, we, we talked a little bit earlier. I know uh, you were down there last night as well. Barrett we, we spoke on some of the things that he saw that maybe caught his eye. I'll, I'll just start there with you. Pretty basic question. Things that jumped out to you, positive, negative, whatever, that you said, oh, okay, maybe I'll store that away, or that was really impressive. I was, you know, surprised to see the RPO game as 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 important as it was. You typically don't see, especially in the modern NFL, a big emphasis on the running game at practice. And I don't know if it was because the defense had sort of been dominating this summer, but the Eagles really kind of dusted off the RPO game and Jalen looked great running it. At one point, Brandon Graham was just left in the dust and had to applaud as, as Jalen went by him. Um, man, I, I, you know, I saw him in, in, in the spring and I said, he looks like he lost weight. Now Jalen says he didn't, but he admitted uh, last week he gave up uh, lemonade. He loves lemonade, gave up the, the sugary drinks and, he kind of remade his body. So it might be still 220, but he looks quicker. And I started to think to myself, I, you know, what the heck are we talking about making this guy a pocket passer? What, what, why don't you build around what he is? And that's where I am with the Eagles. Build around what Jalen Hurts does well. And a lot of that is the movement skills, the RPO, stuff like that. And I, I, I'm, I don't understand this. Let's turn him into Justin Herbert. He's not He's not going to be Justin Herbert. But well, Justin Herbert, he can do things Justin Herbert can't do. I don't know. Utilize it. Yes. That's what the Eagles should be doing. John, I said the same thing, but I, I equate it more so to, all right, he's not going to have the blazing 4,500 uh, uh, 4, yards a game, 38 touchdowns thrown, but he's going to get the most telling statistic of all of them wins in the win column and if you approach the game like that you're gonna win you know he has the ability to go out there and win you football games now the problem is when you get into contract time do you pay him as a quarterback that that's mm. that's a you know a top tier quarterback who, who who has a great winning percentage but not necessarily the the statistics that you know go with that but you have a guy that goes out there and wins when you need to win, and he can take you into the playoffs, maybe even win you a Super Bowl. Yeah, and to me, you know, that's the the philosophy, the offseason talk, the, what Jeffrey Lurie wants. We all know that a high-octane passing offense, that's what he would prefer, and that's great. If you can go get it, go find it. I think the assumption, though, that – you know, you're going to pick up every rock and find Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady is kind of silly. So um, it's not easy to find those types of players. So if you can get better, get better. If you can't, build around what you have. And as Barrett said, you can win a lot of football games if they play the right way. If they play like they did the first five weeks of the season last year, they're going to underachieve. But if they play the way they did starting Las Vegas forward, they're going to win a lot of football games, as, look, as look, Barrett said. 
Well, let me ask both. I'm going to ask you and Barrett this because you guys have been there a lot. We've talked about all the so-called deficiencies that a, a Jalen Hurts has had. We talked. You, you guys have talked about what you've seen in terms of improvement. But the one aspect I have not heard anybody talk about yet is, and I and, and John, you make a valid point in terms of instead of trying to mold him into something he's not and maybe handcuffing him, enhance what he is to make him better at what he does. But one thing I've not heard either of you guys talk much about is how much have you seen of him rolling to his left? The one thing that really stood out is he's not the same thrower when he's rolling to his left, obviously, as he is to his yeah. right. Yeah. If you're going to make him more of, an, of a balanced leap of threat, because I've seen you see the better quarterbacks who can do this. They can go to their offhand and throw it on a, a Patrick Mahomes, uh, an Aaron Rodgers, and I'm not, and I'm not comparing him to them, but – I'm saying as the evolving process continues, as the evolution of Jalen Hurts continues, that has to be a necessity in his game, or defensive coordinators are going to pick up on that and try to force him to his left. Have you guys seen much of them working well, I saw, toward I, on that? I, I, I saw one play, and it was okay. the ugliest play of training camp. He threw it across uh, his body in the middle of the field, got intercepted. Uh, that's not what I want um, to hear. Uh, you know, Todd Bowles um, already figured it out. Yes. You know, so uh, that's what Tampa Bay did last year in the playoffs. It's just kryptonite. You know, he's Zoolander for all you movie fans. He can't go Zoolander. left. Yeah, he can't. He can't go left. He's an ambi turner. But, uh, but you know, here taking enough right turns, you eventually go left, man. So yeah. like that. Okay. You know what? What? You know, Jalen's not good at going left. And teams are going to try to force him there. But not everybody has Vita Bay. And not everybody has linebackers that can run, that can execute that game plan. So that's part of it. Number two, look, if you find yourself flush to the left, throw the football away. You know, Mm -hmm. live to play another down. Uh, Or, 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 you know, it's easy to do. So as long as you stay away from the big mistake, I think the Eagles can live with it. But certainly, opposing defensive coordinators are going to look at that film from the yep. Tampa Bay playoff game, and they're yep. going to try to to do similar things. But again, you know, you you don't have Vita Bea who is pushing Jason Kelsey into the backfield. Right. You don't have linebackers right. that can run sideline to sideline. So it's easy to say, it's not as easy to do for Jalen. He can't. You know, it's not a strength. Every quarterback has weaknesses. He yes. just has to realize his weakness and live to play another down. So whether that's throwing the football away, running out of bounds, do what you need to do. But John, John, me, my biggest, I'm sorry, Rob. My biggest concern no. is, and you make a valid point, my biggest concern is, say it's fourth, fourth and 10 or 12, games on the line. If a smart coordinator does that, boom, that, that could cost him in a lot of ways. And, and that's what I'm just saying. You're well, right. yeah, Every that, quarterback you know, has a deficiency. But. Well, that's the get. Look, I always say margin of error. That's how I describe it. I say it okay. all the time. Okay. Like, my, you know, if you have Aaron Rodgers, if you have Patrick Mahomes, you have a greater margin of error True. than other teams. True. You can win other ways. Yes. The Eagles, San Francisco proves that. I say it all the time. They made a Super Bowl with. Worst quarterback play than the Eagles got from Jalen Hurts last year. Mm-hmm. They almost made another Super Bowl mm-hmm. with worse quarterback play than the Eagles got from Jalen Hurts. Their margin of error was smaller. They right. beat Green Bay with special teams in right. the playoffs. Um, so you don't have you can't get down 14 nothing like mm-hmm. Kansas City. You can't get down 21 nothing like Kansas City did to Houston a couple years ago and say, you know what? Not that big of a deal. We're going to come back. We're going to win this game. And they won that game by, what, two touchdowns, I think, going away. Right. The Eagles can't do that. We know they can't do that. But what they can do, plus one in the running game with Jalen Hurts, best offensive line in football when Jordan yep. Mylott is out there. Yep. Take advantage. And now, by the way, now you have A.J. Brown. So when those early progressions, first of all, AJ's always open. Dallas is always open. That makes it easier for the quarterback. Right. Jalen can make plays in the passing game. Right. The issue is he's not consistent. That's fine. 
you could still win a lot of games, as Barrett said. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Eagles should be focused on. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think the coaching staff will be focused on that. My, my bigger concern is the front office. Are they willing to accept winning football games that way? I don't have the answer to that. But yeah. I will say to Barrett's original point, they're not going to pay $40 million for that when, when contract time comes around. <laughs> right. John, yeah, I, I, off of Hurts for a minute, uh, we, we all saw the video of, of Jordan Davis just, you know, <laughs> mauling Cam Jurgens. Of course, just, Cam Jurgens. I mean, unreal, right? But that aside – what have you noticed day to day with him? I, we, we've, I've seen a few things where you're just wowed by the in, insane size and athleticism. But from a consistency standpoint, how has he looked day to day? Um, he's looked good. You know, he's a rookie. He's going to have some growing pains. I, I, I think a lot of it is, you know, conditioning. He's not used to playing a lot at Georgia because they came at you in waves. He didn't have to play a lot. Then they were up, you know, three, four touchdowns in the second half. So, I think that's a work in progress, but I think what Jordan Davis does more than anything else is it enables the Eagles to do so many more different things on the front. Um, they use this five, two overhang look. They use, they can use three, four, they use four, three in obvious pass rushing situations. They line Hassan Reddick and Brandon Graham up inside. Um, and they have another edge rusher outside. Um, because he can handle the nose or one technique, that opens up so many more things that they couldn't do last year because that's not the strength of Javon Hargrave or Fletcher Cox. He can tie up multiple blockers. He's, he's going to have a big impact on this team. He really is. But, you know, the one thing I'm concerned about, I've, I've mentioned this on Birds 365, he's not going to put up a lot of stats. So I hope people recognize, you know, the impact he's having on the game because he's going to allow other players, just like he did at Georgia with N'Kobe Dean, he's going to allow other players to make splash plays. And I hope people recognize that. Similar to a Fletcher Cox. Yeah, um, e even more so because Fletcher earlier in his career um, did, you know, have some pretty significant pass rushing stats for a defensive tackle. And you see now, D Gun, he doesn't hit those numbers and everybody right. thinks Fletcher stinks. And yep. Fletcher doesn't stink. He's a really good player. But that narrative sort of changes. So a little bit of concern to keep mm. in the back of your mind. I don't think I, I don't think necessarily um his job will be to go out there and make plays like that. Now, Flesh, they they wanted Flesh to get up yeah, the field. Fletch and do was that. playing three, three yeah, technique. Yeah. Now yeah, you could so tell Fletch yeah. was yeah, Fletch was and that's why Fletch liked Jim Schwartz so much, because he yep. told him <laughs> just go get the quarterback. Yeah, and, just go hunt. And, yeah. And it was fun for him. So yeah. now he's playing a lot of four eye technique. Now he's he's got to be a little bit more disciplined in the other in the Eagles current scheme and it's not as fun, but he got used to it. And in the second half of last season, he saw it working. And as long as it works, I think Fletcher's happy. John, did we get an answer how these guys got concussed? You know, they're wearing these the, the pads and the whole the guardians and all this. Like, how does that yeah. happen? Well, Andre, Andre Dillard, I saw Lee practice. So I knew something happened to him. And it was pretty clear that he didn't, you know, he wasn't. Right. grabbing a leg or an arm. So it was pretty clear uh, something was going on. And and I didn't – Jordan finished practice that day, and then he showed up the next day, had a concussion. Uh, Boston Scott, I saw, he got, he got a pretty significant hit from Marcus Epps. I think that's where he got concussed. But, yeah, I mean, those guardian caps <laughs> – as Lane will call them, those goopy things. But um, they, they're supposed to protect you 33% more. I, I always – look, I always laugh about – and Barrett can talk about this, obviously, better than us. It's a violent sport. You can't, you, you can't make it not violent. The only way to remove injuries from football is to stop playing football. That's Cut it. it out. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you can put on – Put foam on them. If they hit heads the wrong way, they're going to get a concussion. Mm -hmm. And everybody no, thinks listen, that everybody thinks that that you know football is, is you know has the most concussions. 
actually, um, yeah, soccer, women's yeah. soccer has more yeah. concussions than even the NFL. Well, what about field hockey? That's that too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when you don't have protection, all, all, you know, you hit your head the wrong way. And, um, you know, I've always, I've always said there's a, a an author, his name is Herb Mushnick, and he did a lot of, of, of work on concussions. And I've talked to him, and he said, you know, football's too violent. We shouldn't be playing football, especially on the youth level. I have more respect for people like that than people who say we can we can we can make this violent sport on not violent. Like that to me is just that to me is just silly. And and from an NFL standpoint. We all understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to to limit right. their um, their their liability in future litigation. That's what yeah. it's about. No, That's all I, it's I, about. Understood, John. So if we go into the premise that your first four are receiver wise are AJ, Devontae, Zach Pascal, and Quez, if, if that's the assumption. Well, you got Zach in front of Quez. Well, you can flip either <laughs> one of those, but they're, that's your four. That's your four. Who are the other two? Or are there going to be two? Are there going to be one? Is is Covey going to make it? Is Rager, you know, a done deal? Does anybody else have a chance? Deion Kane's had a good camp. How, how do you see the yeah, after I, that I, person I, working out? I mean, I think the Eagles would like to trade Jalen. They're they're not going to cut him, uh, Jalen Rager. You know, it's interesting. I asked Jalen's played pretty well, mm-hmm. and he's gotten first team reps because. Um, Quez had a little injury. Then Devontae got hurt. Zach's been out with the food poisoning. So he's gotten a lot of first-team reps. And he's played pretty well. But I asked Nick about the targets, and it's interesting because everything goes to A.J. in Dallas. Like, nobody else gets the football, even Devontae, um, when he was healthy. Um, And he was going through it and giving me the runaround with this and that. But he never brings up Jalen Rager. You can see in the Eagles' minds, like, they're past him. But they're not going to cut him because he's a first-round pick. The only way he's going to get on the field from an offensive perspective is through injury. Now, punt returns, that's where Britt and Kobe could make this team, but only if they trade Jalen Rager. And, and well, So it's got to be one or the other in your yeah, estimation. Yeah, they're not keeping them both because – you know, Britain as impressive as he's been, and he has been pretty impressive. Um, can't do a lot of other things. I mean, he's five eight, he's one hundred and seventy pounds, so he's he can only play in the slot. He's not a special teams guy from a coverage standpoint. So you're not going to keep a guy just to be a punt returner. That's a really difficult do, thing to do in the modern NFL, and you're certainly not going to do it if Jalen Rager is going to be your pump returner. So you're not going to keep two of those guys. I just feel as though, you know, also feel as though um, when you look at the amount of slots they have on the team and the amount of linebackers they have, how many linebackers are going to keep? You know, not even talking about wide receiver, but how many linebackers? You know, because they're so specialized in what they bring to the table. You got the inside, you know, Yeah, you're talking off-ball. Yeah. Um, you know, the edge rushers to me, Hassan Reddick and, and Patrick Johnson, Kyron Johnson, they're like defensive ends. So mm-hmm. I don't even consider them uh, linebackers. Um, so the off-ball guys, you have uh, obviously TJ, Kaiser, Davion Taylor, Nicobe Dean, and Sean Bradley. I mean, yep. that's, that, that is pretty cut and dry. Um, and, and that's the best – all-ball group the Eagles have had in a very long time. Look, everybody was really excited about N'Kobe Dean in the draft. He can't he can't get on the field with the first team right. <laughs> because TJ's playing too well, Kaiser's playing too well, and Davion's playing too well. So that's a really positive problem to have. And it's not a bad thing for N'Kobe Dean. He's a rookie. He's learning. Um, maybe he comes on by the second half of the season. But it's a nice position to be in. Normally, we're not talking about the Eagles. We're crossing our fingers that Nate Gary can make the move from safety to play linebacker. The Eagles have some pretty good linebackers, and that's that's a really positive development. 
Mm-hmm. John, it seems that uh, Bradbury is getting a lot of a lot of shine here, like a lot of uh, amazing, uh, you know, reviews on the way that he's played thus far. I, I'm just trying to imagine what this is going to look like with he and Slay, man. We talk about linebackers. When was the last time they had two really quality shutdown type corners as well? It's been a little bit. Yeah, you got to go back to uh, Sheldon and uh, Lido. Lido. Yep. Lido. Um, and even that, I think this group potentially is even better. And I I had Avante Maddox in there. Bradbury is a good player, man. He is a good player. He knows how to play. He's big. He's physical. Um, even on the, the the pass everybody got excited about yesterday, where Jalen hit AJ Brown. AJ had to make a tremendous catch. Bradbury was right there in coverage. Um, it was one handed from mm-hmm. from my perspective. He had to make a phenomenal play because Bradbury's right there. You know, he got beat by Devontae once earlier in camp. And I got to tell you, their next rep in one-on-ones, he he pressed him so much. Devontae, I think that's how he got hurt. He just he just got both his arms on him, and that was it. Play was over because he wouldn't let him off the line of scrimmage. He is a really physical, really long Really good quarterback. He's the corner. He's very savvy. He he can make plays on the ball. And you know, he's not even the best corner. So typically, if you came into a season and said James Bradbury's the Eagles' best corner, you'd be pretty happy. And now you have Darius Slay and James Bradbury. Oh, man. Yeah. I tell you, it, you know, both sides, these coordinators have a lot to work with, man. There, yeah. there's a lot of de- there's a lot of talent on this team, yeah, and that's why I said if you play the right way with Jalen Hurts, you're going to win a lot of football games. Hey, you hey, might John, not be able to throw yeah. the ball consistently, but you're going to win a lot of football. Games. <laughs> hey, John, is Marcus Epps uh, pro- pro- progressing to your satisfaction? Yeah, I love Marcus Epps. Mm-hmm. I think the only one who loves Marcus Epps more than me is Jonathan Gannon. Or he's, Barrett. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> it, I, I saw Marcus when he was a rookie. Um, he got drafted by Minnesota. And, and the whole thing with Marcus was he was a really smart and savvy coverage player in college, but he was really small, really undersized, yeah. and um, not very physical. And all of a sudden, you know, he bought, he owns a gym in Southern California. Hmm. Um, he runs it. It looks like he spends all his time in that gym, all his yeah. free time. <laughs> He's a completely different guy physically. Hmm. And I, I, I hesitate to bring up the name Malcolm Jenkins, but you know, people forget Malcolm came into this league as a corner. Yep. And all of a sudden, he built up his body, and he was this big, physical, intimidating safety. Now, I'm not saying Marcus Epps is going to be Malcolm Jenkins because he's not. But from a physical standpoint, he's completely remade his body. Like I said, he knocked Austin Scott out. Um, And Marcus Epps, the rookie, was not going to do that. So he's, he's much more equipped to play in the NFL. And if, if you know, we all say only – there's, a, there's probably always going to be one safety who never leaves the field, and everybody was saying it's going to be Anthony Harris, it's going to be Chikwaski Tart, who can't even get first-team reps. It's going to be Marcus Epps. He's the mm-hmm. one who's not leaving the field. Ever. I've been screaming it, bro. I've mm-hmm. been screaming this since, since February. I kept telling people, number one, Marcus Epps will be the best safety we have. Have I not been saying that, guys? You have. Yes, you and have. And then I also said that T.J. Edwards – you have. It's not going to – he's not going to relinquish yeah. that middle linebacker position. I don't care how good the rookie is. T.J. Edwards changed how this defense was run the latter part of the season because he's so physical and down, such a downhill linebacker that they started stopping a run when he started playing. So I hate to say that I'm right, but I am right this time. <laughs> yeah. TJ's, TJ is the most underrated player on this team. Absolutely. In Absolutely. my opinion, John, will we see will we see any starters on Friday against the Jets? Uh, I'm trying to think, maybe Quez. Do you consider Quez a starter? Yeah, um, yeah I mean Border. Yeah. Um, Jordan might play. He's a rookie. Um, 
maybe Kaiser plays a little bit. Um, maybe Marcus plays a little bit because they're young players, but nothing of note. And the ones who do play, they're going to play really short cameos. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot of Kennedy Brooks and Jason Huntley running the ball. You're going to see a lot of Britton Covey. So get ready for those stories. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're going to see a lot of Carson Strong, um, who has not been good. Reed Sinnett has lapped Carson Strong as as the third quarterback. In fact, Reed Sinnett got some second team reps. He's closer to Gardner Minshew than Carson Strong is to him. Um, and 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 the young corners. They have so many young corners. Um, they're going to play a ton. But yeah, the Eagles showed last year. Look, Jalen Hurts played four games um, as a rookie, as we all know. Didn't play well uh, for the. It was a bad team. Completed fifty-two percent of the passes. He he could have used preseason work last year. They didn't play him. Why the heck would they play him this year? They're and you know, you're not going to play the offensive line. You're not playing Kelsey. You're not playing Lane. You're not playing Isaac, who's coming back from a serious injury. Uh, it's going to be like last year. Very few starters, and mm. and this is where the the third team they don't those guys don't get a lot of reps in practice, um, and they're going to get a ton of reps in in preseason games, and it's where they have to sort of try to open the coach's eyes. Okay, all right, John, Melissa, man, good stuff. Uh, we appreciate it. We'll we'll look Thank forward you, to John. Your, uh, Checking out every single day, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., Birds 365, and your content on jacobsports.com. Looking forward to the season. We're we're getting there, man. What are we, a little more than a month now? We're about a month. Yeah, we're in the game week. Oh, yeah. We're yeah, close to those Jets game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah close, game, game week. Yeah, Everybody's good stuff, excited. John. A tradition unlike any other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you usually get that last game is the Jets. Yeah. Is, yeah. you know. The Masters. Exactly. Yeah. Only three of these, by the way. Uh, John, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for a couple minutes. All right, All right thanks, John. guys. Be good, bro. Yep, All right, bro, bro. you got it. That's John McMullen. Again, check out his reports every single day, uh, jacobsports.com, and, of course, Birds 365, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. All right, let's step aside. We do have some NFL stuff, guys. Uh, Kareem oh, Hunt yes. making some news, uh, some injuries. A kicker gets paid oh, in yes. a big, big way. Robert Sala announces how much he's going to play his starters. So we'll, we'll, we'll dive yep. into that as well. All kinds of stuff. We got some birthdays, some movies on this date. All kinds of stuff. You don't want to go anywhere. Don't move. Barrett, Derek, Rob, Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. We're right back.